You have perhaps seen amber and know its rich, sunshiny color and its fragrance when rubbed. And do you also know that rubbing will make amber attract things somewhat as a magnet does? Genie's beads had all these properties, but some other besides, wonderful and lovely. And it is of those particularly that I wish to tell you. Each bead has inside of it some tiny thing, encased as if it had grown in the amber. And Genie is never tired of looking at it and wondering about them. There is one with a delicate bit of ferny moss shut up, as it were, in a globe of yellow light. In another is the tiniest fly, his little wings outspread and raised for flight. Again, she can show us a bee lodged in one bead that looks like solid honey, and a little bright-winged beetle in another. This one holds two slender pine needles lying across each other. And here we see a single scale of a pine cone, while yet another shows an atom of an acorn cup, fit for a fairy's use. I wish you could see the beads, for I cannot tell you the half of their beauty. Now, where do you suppose they came from? And how did little Scotch Genie come into possession of such a treasure? All she knows about it is that her grandfather, old Kenneth, who cowers now all day in the chimney corner, once, years ago when he was a young lad, went down upon the seashore after a great storm, hoping to help save something from the wreck of the Goshak that had gone ashore during the night. And there, among the slippery seaweeds, his foot had accidentally uncovered a clear, shining lump of amber, in which all these little creatures were embedded. Now, Kenneth loved a pretty highland lass, and when she promised to be his bride, he brought her a necklace of amber beads. He had carved them himself out of his lump of amber working carefully to save in each bead the prettiest insect or moss, and thinking, while he toiled hour after hour, of the delight with which he should see his bride wear them. That bride was Jeanie's grandmother, and when she died last year, she said, Let little Jeanie have my Lamour beads, and keep them as long as she lives. But... What puzzled Jeanie was how the amber came to be on the seashore, and most of all, how the bees and mosses came to be inside of it. Should you like to know? If you would, that is one of Mother Nature's stories, and she will gladly tell it. Hear what she answers to our questions. I remember a time long, long before you were born, long even before any men were living upon the earth. Then these Scotch highlands, as you call them, where little Jeanie lives, were covered with forests. There were oaks, poplars, beeches and pines, and among them one kind of pine, tall and stately, from which a shining yellow gum flowed just as you have seen little drops of sticky gum exude from our own pine trees. This beautiful yellow gum was fragrant, and as the thousands of little insects fluttered about in the warm sunshine, they were attracted by its pleasant odor, perhaps too by its taste, and once alighted upon it, they stuck fast and could not get away while the great yellow drops oozing out surrounded and at last covered them entirely. So too, wind-blown bits of moss, leaves, acorns, cones and little sticks were soon securely embedded in the fast-flowing gum, and as time went by, it hardened and hardened more and more 
And this is amber. That is well told, Mother Nature. But it does not explain how Kenneth's lump of amber came to be on the seashore. Wait then for the second part of the story. Did you ever hear that? In those very old times, the land sometimes sank down into the sea, even so deep that the water covered the very mountain tops, and then, after ages, it was slowly lifted up again, to sink indeed, perhaps yet again and again. You can hardly believe it, yet I myself was there to see. And I remember well when the great forests of the north of Scotland, the oaks, the poplars and the amber pines, were lowered into the deep sea. There, lying at the bottom of the ocean, the wood and the gum hardened like stone, and only the great storms can disturb them, as they lie half buried in the sand. It was one of those great storms that brought Kenneth's lump of amber to land. If we could only walk on the bottom of the sea, what treasures we might find!